The Steelers are playing their starters this weekend versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Patrick Peterson names his camp standouts to this point in Steelers training camp. And I've got some takeaways from Wednesday's practice leading up to this game here on Friday to kick off the Steelers preseason. And speaking of that game, we're going to be doing a live watch party on Friday. Friday. Make sure you are there by clicking that subscribe button and turning on your notifications. We are going to be covering all three preseason games and all 17 regular season games here for you on the channel. If you guys want a place to come kick it with your fellow Yenzers this season, this is going to be the place for you. So do me a favor, click that subscribe button right now. And now let's talk about Mike Tomlin and the Pittsburgh Steelers, where Mike Tomlin, of course, you know, this is the way he's always done it. He announces that all the healthy st starters on the Steelers roster will play this Friday night in Tampa Bay when the Steelers play the Buccaneers. And, you know, I think that it's, it definitely begs the question, right? There's some teams that have differing opinions on this question of whether or not to play established starters in your preseason games. There's teams like the Rams. There's other teams throughout the, uh, the NFL that just don't play guys that are established guys, guys that you really need on the field in the regular season. But the Steelers, you know, with Mike Tomlin, a little bit more old school, wants to play his starters so that they don't have as much rust uh, heading into the season. And there's definitely positives and negatives to playing your starters in the preseasons. Starting with uh, playing them here, the positive there is that it reduces the rust factor. They get some live game reps. They get those live bullets in so that when week, cut, week one comes around, there's no rust uh, to be talking about there. They're ready to go. But the negative, of course, is the risk to injury for these key players. If a TJ Watt or a Kenny Pickett or a George Pickens ends up getting hurt, that could be a major, major hole in the season, and that could be a huge detriment in the long run. And personally, man, I think that when you look at something like this, when it comes to playing starters, you can definitely see the positives and the negatives. I think you can pretty much reverse it when you talk about not playing starters, right? There's always a cost and a benefit to every single decision you make. The positive to, to sitting the starters is that you keep them healthy, right? They're going to be ready for week one. You don't really have to worry about that aspect of the of the equation but the negative is uh you're gonna have uh you're you're gonna have people that are rusty they're gonna have people that just haven't had those live reps now because they are these are established starters you don't really have to worry about them all that much but i personally man i really like mike t's approach to this problem i think he really uh really holds players accountable and he's like you know what we're gonna be ready to go week one we're gonna re be ready to smash somebody in the mouth and personally man when i look at this uh this situation i think that mike tomlin does a really good job at keeping players uh ready to go for the for the start of the season i think that when week one comes around the steelers are going to be ready whereas other teams might have some rust to kick off now what say you guys let me know down there in the comment section should key starters play in the preseason for the pittsburgh steelers give me a yes or give me a no and let me know why down there in the comments section. This can be the pinned comment on today's show. So whenever YouTube throws an ad break your way here, it's going to happen in just a couple of seconds. Take advantage of that time by giving me a yes or a no down there in the comments section. Now, if you want more Steelers content from me on Twitter, you can find my uh, Steelers-specific Twitter page or X page, whatever you want to call it. On Twitter right now, I'm at Sperry underscore Jens. I put my takeaways uh, for, for every single Steelers practice, all these different things. I put a bunch of Steelers content on there, so make sure to do that. And of course, still to come, I'm going to be breaking down Patrick Peterson's camp standouts to this point. He named two guys that have really been impressing him so far, so make sure you stick around for that. And now let's talk about pro football focus that ranked the Pittsburgh Steelers offensive line 12th in the National Football League heading into the 2023 season. And, you know, when you look at this unit, it hasn't really changed all that much from last season. You still got Dan Moore. You still got Mason Cole, James Daniels, and Chuck Wuma Okorafor in there as your starters. But the big piece there is that you're adding Isaac Sayamalu to be the left guard this season, and you're bringing in rookie Broderick Jones to be the eventual starter at the left tackle position. And I would agree with where pro football focus has this offensive line right now. I like the cohesion. I like the additions that they made in the offseason. 
I think in the long run here, this is going to be a really, really good offensive line, which is a godsend for Steelers fans everywhere because we know over the last couple of years, the offensive line play has been brutal. And with, with bad offensive line play, it's really tough to be a good football team that competes for championships. I think Omar Khan made an excellent step this year by adding Isaac Sayamalu and Broderick Jones. And I think this is going to be a really, really effective unit for the black and gold here in 2023. And I cannot wait to see if Kenny Pickett can really thrive behind this offensive line. And then also speaking of lists here, the NFL 100 was released. It was completed the other day. And there was three Steelers players that were listed on the top 100. It's supposedly uh, 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 made by NFL players and coaches and executives. And right now they rank Minka Fitzpatrick, the free safety, the 18th best player in the world. You got TJ Watt there at number 27. And then the defensive tackle, Cameron Hayward, is there at number 45. I think TJ Watt is ranked a little bit too low, in my opinion. I think he needs to be at least in the top 15, just given the value that he brings to the field day in and day out when he's healthy. So I think that's a little bit low. I think Minka's about right. Cam is probably about right as well. But let me know who you think is the best player on the Steelers roster right now by getting in the comments section. Give me an MF if you, want, if you think Minka Fitzpatrick is the best. If you think Cam's the best, give me a CH. If you think it's Watt, give me a TJ. Uh, if you think it's somebody else, tell me who you think is the best player on the Steelers roster right now down there in the comments. And now I think that our uh, I, so so now you're watching Steelers talk. We're, we've got uh, some uh, we got some takeaways from practice coming up here in just a little bit on today's show. But first, I want to talk about Patrick Peterson's camp standouts that he listed uh, the other day here, where he has Calvin Austin the third being somebody that really, really is impressing him right now with the speed factor, the ability to win over the top has really impressed Patrick Peterson to this point in camp. Of course, last year did not play for the Steelers. He was out for the season with that major foot injury, but now he is back and he is lighting up Steelers practice. Now, I think he's going to be more of a rotational piece. I think he's going to be coming in uh, in those four wide receiver sets, clear passing situations. He doesn't provide much value to you as a run blocker, but man, get this guy in open space. He's going to make stuff happen and he can win down the football field. I'm really excited to see what Calvin Austin III is going to do this year. And then Patrick Peterson, a little bit of a surprise here. He listed Luke Barku as another breakout candidate, here, another camp standout from his point of view. And I would agree with this. Luke is somebody that is definitely making waves at Steelers training camp right now. He is a little bit lower on the cornerback depth chart, but right now he's not even on our graphic. He is listed so low, but I'm looking at a guy like Madre Harper, somebody that's probably going to be attempting to step up in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the aftermath of the Corey Trice Jr. season-ending knee injury. And I look at a guy like Luke Barku as somebody that could absolutely rise up the ranks. And that's definitely going to be a position battle that I'm looking out for here. Who's going to be that last cornerback on the Steelers' depth chart for the 2023 season? Will Madre Harper live up to the hype here, live up to the expectation of taking over for Corey Trice Jr.? Or could a guy like Luke Barku coming in from the XFL kind of ascend up the depth chart here in the preseason and show us what he's all about. Now, coming up here, I got my practice takeaways from Wednesday's practice in Latrobe. But before I go over those, I got five of them for you. Let's go ahead and talk about our friends at Fanatics, where they've got an awesome Steelers t-shirt combo for you guys to take advantage of. Go to chatsports.com slash Steelers combo. That's our link. If you use that link, Fanatics will know that we sent you, and you guys can support the channel. Really like that black short sleeve with the Steelers helmet and the long sleeve white long, uh, t-shirt I think is really good as well. So if you need some game day shirts for the Pittsburgh Steelers this year, you know where to go. Go to chatsports.com slash Steelers combo today. And now let's talk about the takeaways that I have from Wednesday's practice. And I've got five of them for you guys. So let's just rattle them off one by one here so you guys know what I'm talking about here. Number one for me is going to be TJ Watt, the dominator himself, absolutely dominated. Steelers practice today, man. Like there is one moment today where Mike Tomlin literally had to interject himself in the drill and say, can somebody please block TJ? Because he is just wrecking everything. 
And this is exactly what you want to see from your star edge rusher. This is exactly what I'm talking about when I say TJ Watt is one of the best, if not the best edge rusher in the National Football League. And that was on full display in Latrobe this afternoon. Then you get to Matt Canada's offense and something that's definitely intriguing to me and something that's very uh, optimistic from my point of view is that they're doing more 12 and 13 personnel this year. They've really been ramping up the bigger sets, the 12 and 13 personnel, which means two tight ends, three tight ends on the field at the same time. That's exactly what I want to see from Matt Canada because this tight end room is absolutely stacked and I think you got to take advantage of that if you're the offensive play caller. Then let's go to the rookie here, Joey Porter Jr., who sat out the team period today. He's had a couple of bumps and bruises throughout training camp. He's limped off a couple of times. Now, I don't think it's anything serious. He was, uh, he was a limited participant in practice today, but him sitting out of team period is definitely something to keep your eye on, especially with the game coming up here this Friday. And then the person that replaced him in the team drills with the ones today, James Pierre, really stepped up. He looked really good. He had a couple of really nice pass deflections, and he overall looked like somebody that could absolutely be that high-end backup corner that you're looking for in the National Football League. We saw it last year when Pierre had some really nice games uh, coming in relief when the Steelers' uh, secondary wasn't uh, was pretty banged up last season, and he really showed out. I think this year he's doing the same thing with James Pierre, he's not going to be a superstar level corner, but he's somebody that's going to get the job done for you. And that's what I really like about him is that he's a very, very solid backup that you can trust on the field. And then Shandon Sullivan, someone that had, that's been having pretty, a pretty quiet camp to this point, had his best day of camp so far. Multiple pass deflections looked really sticky in man coverage from the slot. Right now he is listed as the number one slot corner on the Steelers depth chart. And he definitely looked the part today. Elijah Riley was kind of the one making the splash plays in the slot before. Today it was Sullivan's turn. Uh, so I guess we'll see how that uh, position battle works out here for the rest of camp. Now I'll be it for today's show, guys. Really do appreciate all the support. Make sure you click that subscribe button uh, to become an expert on the 2023 Pittsburgh Steelers. We're going to be covering every game live for you here on the channel. We've got our daily content here uh, here on Steelers Talk as well. So if you want to become an expert on everything that there is to know about the black and gold this year, this is going to be the place for you. So do me a favor, click that subscribe button right now.